This book has so much hype for it and I find that insane. I just randomly saw it in a bookshop and thought it was interesting. Then I learned that the hype was crazy, which to me is just like the wildest coincidence ever. Anyways, Falling is a fantasy romance book written by Rebecca Yaras in 2023 and it's the first book in the Imperian series. Currently there are two books in the series, this one and Iron Flame. A third book has been scheduled for January 2025 and according to Goodreads it has been confirmed by Yaras. I hope I don't ruin or butcher that name too much, that there will be five books in this series. Now, back to Fourth Wing. It stands at a respectable 4.6 out of 5 on Goodreads, which is insane. Well, not really, that's not insane. What's insane is the 1.4 million ratings and 200,000 reviews. Like, that's insane to me. This is wild for a book that is only one year old. But here's the thing, now begs the good question, is it as good as the hype states, or is it just like bloated hype? Well, from the good rating, it should be an amazing book, but uh, I always have my doubts about that. But let's first discuss the cover. The cover of 4th Wing is quite good, I actually like this. I like the boldness of the gold and using black as highlight instead of vice versa. I don't think the book cover itself really represents the story in any way other than dragons and graduate or die. Um, but I think it's cool and gives off some great vibes and great aesthetics of the book. It also did make me pick up the book uh, to let one to read it, so it's an effective cover, I gotta give it that. And I do like it. So yeah, honestly, it works. The only thing I don't like is of course the New York Times bestseller. Get rid of that shit and get rid of this Jennifer L. Armentrout. Armentrout? Armentrout? This woman's quote. I don't care for it. I like how the. Well, I kinda like some of it. I don't like how. Well, okay, let me reframe because I have to make sure I say this correctly. I like how here we get this piece here. And as we turn the book over, it continues. And I like that. I like how it switches to black. I don't know why, it looks good. It didn't need to, but it looks good. But why did it not continue here? Why do we have this broken up circle now? Why? Why, why not continue this pattern over and make a circle? Like this one here with this edge pattern. That just seems like a, an odd decision to me. Like that makes no sense in my world. Uh, yeah. Anyways, let's talk about section one of this book. So let me start out by saying I do like the main character. I don't think Violet is anything special as a character. I don't think she's that unique feeling. And the book isn't trying to reinvent the weak, bookish female protagonist who just wants to prove that she does need protection. It's just using it in a neat way that doesn't feel too or bad. So, like, she's passable and not horrible. So, hey, what was kind of a letdown for me were the like they call it the f not the fr like what do they call it? They call it something weird, but basically when they have to cross that bridge. I might realize, no, remember what it is, I might not. But the bridge crossing thing was kind of a letdown. It was so hyped up throughout the entire intro of the book, and it was just not as epic as I was hoped. Very bold. Uh, wait, what? Oh, yeah. Um, but something it did do was that it was that Yao was very bold because she did name a character, making us think that he's going to be one of the main character trio of Violet, Rihanna, and, and whatever the duo called. Because he gets killed off right away. And I love that. I think it's so good that you name a character and show us right away that you're not afraid to kill him. And this is also where we get the introduction to Satan, the one of the main characters. And I feared it was just love at first sight. So I'm glad it wasn't. I mean, he, he's described as hot, and that's fair. And Violet is a horny 20 year old. I mean, that's fair. So of course she cares about how he looks. But it wasn't like instantly, oh, I'm gonna make him mine, or he's gonna make me his, or whatever. Um, something 
adding to that though with all the sexual stuff here is how she cheeses Dane with the sex jokes like friends would do. And I cannot tell you how many sexy flirty jokes I've done with my male friends. My girlfriend too, oh, I love you horny, honey. <laughs> no, uh, like that's just a friend. So it feels like fr like natural friends, but it also feels like there's something deeper going on. Well, at least we know Violet thinks there really wants there to be. But we don't quite know about Dane, and that's good. The school part of this book is fine so far. I like how Violet isn't perfect in every aspect, but I would prefer if we spend more time in classes learning about the world, learning the same things that she's learning. And I think when you're telling a story set in a school, you should spend a good amount of time on the classes, at least in the beginning. But it might change later on. And I'm not sure on that point that I like the notebook from her brother and sister. In some ways, it does ruin the badassery of Violet, um, like completing the task on her own. But I mean, so far she hasn't used it as much as I thought she would, so that's good. And as of like, I hate how Violet is basically just cheating her way out of the fighting. They're training for war, but it's as if she doesn't care about it. And I'm so happy that she got her ass kicked by Satan and got a wake up call about the reality that just because you can win a like a scrimmage fight, a fake fight, doesn't mean that you can win an actual battle in real world. Alright, so I, I like that. Something that I kind of iffy on is then the dragons that are categorized by color and then the weapon at the end of the tails. That seems odd to me. Color makes sense. We do that with a lot of things. But tail tips? Is that really the best you could do? Because they don't... It's not... Okay. In principle, it's not bad. But the problem is it's not described as if that makes a, like a red... Dagger tail is not really different from a red club tail. Like they might as well just be red dragons and that just be a mutation or a family thing or whatever. Like there's no difference. They might as well be the same species. It's the same as where people say cats are cats no matter the species of cats because they're all cats. It's kind of the same thing here. They, they're orange, they're red dragons because they're red dragons and they're red dragons. Yeah, some of them might have a line, some of them might have a club tail. Like, who cares? So I would like for it to be a little more like maybe size being a thing, wingspan, or maybe like personality we already kind of get from the color, or maybe even more, or maybe they deeper categorize them like in color or some personality or whatever. I just feel like if you're gonna add two ways of categorizing, so you kind of have a main category which would be color, and then subcategorizing by tail weapon, you need to do something with it. And she, Yara just doesn't. It's just there. And that's boring. Um, something else that I think is kind of sad is how much I hate Satan right now. The I'm keeping you alive shows to show myself that I'm not a horrible person. It's such a manipulative bullshit thing to say. We even know it's a lie. He's actively helping new people. Like, he's actively helping the first years who were drafted into the Riders. We've seen he's a good person. Why do we glorify this toxicity then? Why? Why couldn't he just be an arrogant prick? Or, literally, we already established he has a reason to hate Violet. Why couldn't that just be it? Why does he have to have... Oh, I'm keeping you alive because all the time I lose my humanity. Oh, fuck off with that bullcrap. Ah... <sighs> I hate that trust so much. The only good thing about the manipulation scene is the fact that Satan does tell Violet she can do it on her own. And kind of goes against what Dane has been saying, because Dane wants her to give up because she doesn't believe her. But Satan does believe her. And like it, it, Satan is such a bad name to say out loud. It sounds like I'm saying Satan, and I'm not. <sighs> this book. <laughs> it's not bad so far, but it just... It has some clunky steps where I feel like it's missing out. And as with many things that's clunky, I think the freshing part here were too short. It was great, but it was short. And I do like we actually get to see Violet try and fight and actually succeeding 
we also get a good perspective of what the value the dragons are looking for. Like, what are the actual values? Like the brave and the what's the cleverness or something like that. Like how smart they are, and how like interpreting brave doesn't necessarily mean willing to stand on the front line. But in this case, means standing up for what's right, even though you know that you are outnumbered or, or probably won't survive it. And we have seen multiple times that Violet is smart. We don't. I don't know why she's doubting herself. So getting the two dragon kills a little cliche, but honestly, I think it's perfect. I think it's good. I like the banter between Tan and um, Violet, and I love that uh, Adana is just this innocent and probably gonna be the more playful, cute one. And I like that. I like that group dynamic we get from it. So I'm gonna knock that out. So far, the book is not living up to the hype. There's too many half like good ideas, but not quite completed. But maybe it gets better in you know the next chapter. Before we start, I just uh, I, I want to say I forgot to write down when I decided to end part two for this review, but I think it was somewhere around chapter 25-ish or so. I don't think it matters too much, but uh, you can let me know in the comments down below. Something I do like is how right after the fishing is how the human generals pretend to have a say in whether Violet gets to keep the dragons or not, while in actuality the dragons who in chat. I think that's great. On that note, something I wish we got more of was exactly the Dragon Society part. And it, because it's so interesting, but it feels like a missed opportunity. Just teach us more. It doesn't even have to be like the dragons revealing a secret. It could just be Professor Isakawi who really cares about like the what you call like the Society of Dragons. Like just tell us what we what the humans know. But yeah. But something I am really glad about is I'm so fucking glad it's not a love triangle. But that Violet is clear on her feelings for Dane and tells him right away. Even if it's a bit rough. He was getting annoying and by quite I mean very annoying. And everyone protecting and helping Violet in general is fun because we get some good characterization. Oh, that was an alarm. <laughs> I just wish we got more and not just constantly fade to black. So, something that was great were the night attack scene. We get to see some great magic, like the magic from Adana, like her magic specifically, and Satan's reaction. And it really seems like he cares. And then it kind of feels like a red herring, but at the same time, not at this point in the storm, that he doesn't probably doesn't care at all but only cares because otherwise he dies himself so we kind of get this <laughs> clearly the the love love couple we get this will they one day dynamic stuff going and it's fine it's not bad but fuck it two-year-old adana is adorable and precious and i just love her so much and be and her being a child probably explains why Tian says that she can't keep up with the flying and why she stays away and I bet she was only at the freshing because she was curious and went without permission. And I love it. I think it's. I think she's just adorable. <laughs> the morning after the night attack, we get to see some true characterization from Dane. He doesn't believe Violet, his oldest friends, and he almost forces his power upon her. It shows he cares more about his the rules and his best friend. And on that note. Satan telling him he chooses some weird times to trust and believe Violet does show that everyone is aware of how Dane prioritizes. Something I hated was when Violet and Liam were at the archive and Violet is surprised about empathy and says she never gets that to prefer her friend Denise or something like that. Uh, shows empathy by being worried that Violet is like almost were killed. And Violet's like, oh, someone cares about me. What a twist. And that is such a blatant lie and a horrible try at gaslighting us. And your Yaros knows it. Violet is surrounded by re Ruddick, Sawyer, Liam in some case. It also seems like he really likes her. And they all want to help her and defend her and care for her. So saying she doesn't get empathy is a blatant lie. And it's such a... Like, oh, I hate that. Now, 
It would be true if she said outside of her group or something like that. But she didn't. And I hate that. It's such a bad lie. Another thing I really didn't like was the dragon sex thing. And it's not because of the sex. It's because not even five minutes in she thinks they're taking too long. And I know it's because her hormones and feelings are in overdrive. But for fuck's sake, woman. At least acknowledge the dragons aren't just having a quickie when they're literally at risk of dying all the time. Like, just say, I wish they would hurry up. Like, or have her look at the time and be like, oh god, it's only been five minutes. It feels like forever or something like that. Acknowledge it hasn't been long and that she just wants it over with. And the final thing I really hate is how overprotective Satan is, but without doing shit. He orders people to train and protect Violet, as if no one can know their link. Everyone fucking knows, dude. Just train her. Give us a training montage where she keeps losing her cool and getting distracted or getting distracted or whatever. Then end it with her controlling her anger and the dragon steaming her radio to channel her power. This half assed solution he's doing is just asinine to me. Talking about channeling and being ready. I get that Yaros was trying to sell us on the Violet had to control her emotions. But the scene where she does, it does not feel any different than normally when she's mad. Because normally she can get mad but can bite it in her. Usually it's only towards Satan. And yeah, this one time she could hold her mouth against Satan. But literally the next time she can't. It's frustrating me. And what's mainly frustrating me is the book has so many good ideas and concepts. It just falters on a lot of them. I get why reviewers that I've seen like Booktube and so on are being harsh because for the hype that this book had, I expected better. Now don't get me wrong, I talk a lot of negative about this book, but honestly it's not a bad read. I just really think that it's not as good as the hype told it up to be. I expected better and I think Yaros has the, the abilities to do it. Because she shows us a lot of brilliant ideas and ways to execute them. And yeah, not all of them are original. Who cares? They're good. They work. And then, after this rant, Satan finally takes over the training. And then it just fades to black. You should really spend more time on each aspect instead of throwing in so much else. Like, she just goes, oh, this, oh, this, oh, this. Give us the conclusion, like the freshing. Wasn't it the freshing where they stole the map of like her mom's office or something stupid like that was brilliant and then we the chapter literal into it and then all cares mm, erupted i was like great great chapter end. next chapter is gonna start out with the teachers yelling being absolutely horribly mad and then wants to be like that's was badass dawn of you guys or something like that and that's not what we're getting also it would be, it's, it would be a great potential setup for later in the book uh, spoilers that not like these battle brief and not telling them everything so maybe there are some things on the map that they see like some markers for some battles they never even heard of and uh, when they try and confront the teachers the teachers just be like well you don't need to know everything we only pick out the most important ones or whatever and then later we realize that's because these battles here were not against the griffins but were against the venom or whatever that would have been a great pay like setup and payoff yeah. Uh, yeah, that was no, that was the, yeah, that was the squad battle thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember exactly. Anyways, yeah, that's uh, so far section two. It's good, good book. Not as good as I was hoping, but uh, let's get to the final part, the rest of this book. The first thing I want to talk about here in part 3 is the outpost visit. I thought that was great and judging Mira giving Ding the talking he needed from someone that he respects. I think what she did was great. Also like the lesson that she was trying to impart on her and how, yet how stupid they all were to not realize like work within the hypothetical but ended up doing it and actually learning a lot from her. What I don't like and I complained a little about it before, but I'm gonna complain about it again. Is how the book ends almost every chapter with a small time skip of Fate to Black. And it isn't even that long of a book. Like, the book is only like 
it's not that much. Like what, 500 page? Not even 500 pages? Come on. Yeah, Ross, you can add more. The war games were great. We got to see Violets use both her powers and the dragons still much fun. Their personalities, I just want more. And I also want Dane to start changing and improve as a character. I want something to happen to him. He's a stale, annoying character. We had so many times now where he could show some character growth and we'd seen some, but it's just not enough, he's just annoying. But uh, let's talk about something that I do like, which is how um, Yaros decided to end chapter 29 on page 371 in your textbook, students. So page 371, it's right here, then we end up... Mm, we ended. Blank page, then chapter. Just to put that into perspective, let's find the end of chapter 30. God fucking damn it. Because it's not everywhere she did it, that's why I wrote it down when it happened. See here. So I like the meta aspect of doing this to signify importance. I guess I just didn't think about it for the end here. Uh, there. Like. And I like that. Uh... Oh, I get it. This is the sex scene. It's just an entire chapter of sex. Starting on page 372. It goes all the way, all the way to 387. Six. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Like, I don't mind that. Because it, it signifies that the chapter is a little different. But it's great. And I like that. I like the meta aspect. So let's skip ahead a bit in the book here. I do like everything about how Satan had lied to Violet and her reaction was just perfect. I think it's exactly how it should be. Even if it's a little cliche with the rebel group and all that, it still works. It was actually like you don't need to reinvent the wheel every time to write a good book. Take something that works and just work with it, make it your own. And I think Yaros has done that for the most part in this book. I know some criticism has been like, oh, there's four quadrants that's like the four houses of Harry Potter. Bitch, I'm pretty sure the military has quadrants to make it easier to control the units and stuff. Like, this is not a anything unique. And yeah, anyways, what was I? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, it was also nice seeing the callback to the book um, that was being gone from the most extensive library is also like answered and her dad's note is also answered in a nice way. Like all of that, like why the book wasn't there and what her dad meant, like all of that being answered together was neat because you kind of forget about how she asked for the book and it just wasn't there and you're like, oh, I guess this library doesn't have it. That's kind of weird, but hey. Can't expect them to have every single book, right? So we can't explain that it wasn't just missing, it was probably removed. The final thing I want to talk about. Well, not the fi second final thing, actually. A penultimate thing is the revelation of Dane spying on Satan via Violet. It put their entire friendship at risk. But also just makes me wonder if maybe Dane was acting all along. Or was he? Like. What, what, what's actually going on? I like that. I think that's great. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is the final fight. I think it was great. It had everything I wanted in it and even, like, almost more important than the chaos, someone important dies. And hear me out, hear me out. I know it sounds bad. And, but if you want to make a fight important and have the read of fear for your characters, you kind of need to kill someone important. And Liam had been a character for most of this book that we'd followed along with Violet. And she's grown to care a lot about him. And Satan cared a lot about him. Everybody cared about Liam. He was a very loved character. So it felt... Okay, I wouldn't say it felt great, because I was actually really sad that he died. But it worked. And it just... Like the entire fight and everything... Just put up to the final chapter, which I also thought were good. We get to see more of Satan as a person, as a character. And not just to, oh, I'll keep you alive just to show everybody that I am still, like to prove to myself I'm still human or whatever bullshit. Like we actually see him be a human being. I like that. 
So uh, yeah, that's the what I had to say for the rest of the book. Let's conclude on this weird ass review of this weird ass book. Let's let's start off with the simple question. Is the book as good as the hype suggest? No. No, not at all. It's good. But I don't think the rating is correct. I think it's more like a 2.5 to 3 out of 5. Like a 3 would be my high end. But it's, it's a good 2.5. Above average. Because Yas has a lot of good ideas. But she also repeats the same mistake again and again and again. Satan's reason for keeping Violet alive makes no sense and is just dumb. At the same time him not helping her is also dumb and makes no sense. There's no character growth for the side characters at time. And the constant fate to black. And she does this whenever a chapter ends. And it's really annoying and repetitive. And it just screams that she wrote, feels like she wrote herself into a corner and didn't know what to do. And there's so many things interested in the interesting in the book. I wish she expanded upon it and made it more and more hers. Because I really feel like if she expanded on the dragons, expanded on the different trials, really went very much in depth on the lessons they're supposed to learn from these trials, I think it would have been great. Why the fuck do they have to cross that bridge? We still don't know. We know they had to cross a bridge to get into the school and so and a certain amount of people dies, but why? Why do we care? Have them stand in front of a dragon to prove their like their bravery or something, and if you run, you die. But if you're brave enough to be able to stand and like not run away, then yeah, you're up with it to the school level. That could also have been good. Something that she does good. Is the humor. The humor is good, the world itself is interesting, if not a little standard, but it's interesting and it carries the book decently. I do like the characters for the most of the time. I know I just complained about them, but most of the time I do like them. And she is good yes, at making this world feel living outside of just violet little bubble. And also in the end of the book, Yara shows us that she is capable of writing really chaotic a a um, scenes with great urgency in a neat way where you don't lose track. And she isn't afraid to kill up named characters, to bring cl death closer to the reader and heighten the tension. She's not afraid and she embraces it and she does it really well the two times we saw it. And to be honest, the biggest problem for the book is it, it is it has so many good ideas and it sets up so much awesome stuff. It just doesn't quite deliver on any of them on the level that we get the feeling Yaros is supposed to be able to do. So would I recommend this book? I actually still would. But be aware that it is a very overhyped and it is a mediocre read that I will that will at times frustrate you. But also at times have these awesome moments that makes you unable to put it down. So really it's it's the perfect like 2.5 to 3 out of 5 book. Next time, we'll be taking on the sequel, Iron Flame. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe.